Okay. Good morning. This is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. It is Thursday, the 20th of January. Um, just really quick, before we get started, if you'd like a three-day pass to the room or you'd like to visit the room, you can email me at tradeandperform at gmail.com. There's no cost to the three-day pass. It does cost to be a member of the room. So uh, if you'd like details, actually, I'll just give you the details here. How's this? It's $95 a month if you just want to be in the room, and it's $250 a month if you would like the algos on your desktop. That's pretty straightforward. So um, uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Uh, okay, so a couple of things. Let's look at how we traded overnight. First of all, yesterday's close was pretty ugly, uh, and then they found responsive buyers. So um, if we look at the overnight session, here's NQ. And again, you can see the story repeats yet again, right? We get down to a key level overnight, right? So you can see we, we um, this was the low right at the close. You can see in Asia, we took out the low, right? Found responsive buyers, backside tested it. And where does it eventually want to make its way back to? Prior days, point of control. So that's how those swing traders keep repeating that trade, right? They trade with low leverage and they can just patiently wait for it to march its way back and most of the time they're correct right if they have any kind of semblance of risk management in that trade most of the time they get it right okay so that was uh nq there's not much more to add there we had econ we have econ again at nine o'clock this is es So again, you can see overnight in ES, they made it a little bit more difficult because they punched underneath the prior day's low. And you can see there's an, a low there that was more than 24 hours old. Found response to buying. They haven't made the march all the way back to 4560. That may be the target today. It's a little bit weird because usually that's a bit of volume point of control and the TPO point of control are together on these two. So I put a note in there this morning. When these two are separated, um, they're both relatively weaker. However, because only the TPO point of control is up here at 4560 the odds that we can swing all the way through this area to the upside are actually high it actually makes the best location in here would be taking out these stops here from 1145 yesterday uh, would be one of the prime locations for exhaustion so again we've been balancing through most of the day um, um, i'll go through what the best setups were uh, but if you look overnight again at key locations what i would do and I was covering this yesterday with Matt, I'd go take a picture of the key locations and what the setups look like in those areas so you could grab those trades. That's what where my focus would be if I were trading right now. That's where my, uh, and I was learning to trade, that's exactly what my focus would be. Like, for example, I'd go to this, um, this 4530 at 2.45 a.m. All right, so let's say I traded overnight. I'd go look at the... Um, What was that 4530 i believe i said that's right so i'd go look at 4530 that's right here and go okay that got above the anomaly All right so my notes will look like this we've gotten above the anomaly this is the backside test of the anomaly so what did this trade what did this trade look like right that's what i want to know for entry and if you look you, so what was the best entry here was the so originally I would have said when we're down here, you had two choices. You either want to close back in with a triangle up back into this bar, which obviously did not happen, right? Or you wanted to stop this guy out here and then close back into him with a triangle up. Very specific process, right? So that didn't happen in any of these places. But what you will notice is that you got a power bar. So I'm going to lay this out. So we're at a key location at 45.30, right? Power bar, power bar. Both these power bars get stopped out here. You put in a no supply, no demand, star diamond. So that already by itself is, is powerful. And then the triangle up, uh, which you actually can't see because it's mega tiny. It's sitting down there, but it is there. I'll, I'll adjust the CS chart uh, so it's closer. But there's the triangle up. That trade lets you from 45.34 all the way up to 
45 53 it's pretty much a thousand dollar contract uh, uh, level right if we look a little bit further at where the prior day's low was on that that's down here at that 45 um, if we go back to um, Asia right and we go okay what did it look like at 4520 which is our our other strong candidate right so I'd go, this is a prior day's low in Asia. So Asia can always be a little bit interesting, right? So if you'll notice, you got a no supply, no demand, but without a star diamond. So no supply, no demand, triangle up, and the triangle up first time pushed you into a power bar to the left, and you got, a, you got enough to get your scale off there, right? Then we came back down, we stopped it out again, this time, there's a no supply, no demand, but not right at the low. So then you get star diamond. So this is nothing at this point until you get the triangle up. Triangle up closed you into the power bar to the left. Lift. All right. And so then you come down again. And this one kind of sucked, actually, because it didn't close back into this power bar. And it didn't stop out this power bar. So, But I want to alter um, strategies here for just a second. Let's say you're Peter and you like to swing from a level. I know Peter's not doing this, but let's say that that 4520 was one of Peter's levels and he's looking for the entry. And so if Peter enters, um, if Peter enters here the first time, right, we stop these two guys out, we get triangle up, he enters here. He gets his scale off, he gets his risk off, but then his balance gets stopped, right? But then he gets the same setup again. So he enters again right here. He gets his risk off. But his stop remains, right? Because Peter's trying to swing this thing. Peter never gets stopped from down here, right? He, he can't let this stage frustrate him. But he ends up taking that trade for a huge swing to the upside. So at the same time, you want to go and list out, well, what were the challenges here if you were shorting? Well, first of all, Peter, so what, what makes the difference between deciding not to take a pretty strong setup of no supply, no demand, star diamond down, right? Because... Yeah, he would have gotten this, but then he misses this whole trade. So what's what's the differentiator there? So that's where you have to have a bias of which way you're looking. We're pretty far in the hole at that point relative to where we were during the U.S. session, right? I mean, look look how far. That's 45.73 down to 45.14. Really big stretch, right? We're below a prior day's low when we look to the left, right? So the differentiator there should be, I know long spring out of that. So if you look in addition to that, right if you look in addition so that's how you you phase out that hey i'm not going to take these trades but then there's a mental challenge to that as well right because if he's long over here and he sees this over here no supply no demand star diamond and then it's closing back into a power bar after stopping it out it's going to create anxiety if you're following the system inch by inch and tick for tick right this is where you have this is where you have to decide whether you're just scalping through this area, which is fine. You had a good scalp. You could say, hey, you know what? I'm taking this trade out. It's giving me everything I need for a good short, and I hope I get set up over here for the long again, which unless you're just taking the triangle up, you don't. It doesn't It doesn't close back into, according to our rules, it's got to close back into a power bar for our most conservative, aggressive entries, right? It's got to close back into a power bar or give me a no supply, no demand, triangle up right so either way no matter how you manage this you're probably going to experience some type of anxiety and some type of disappointment no matter how it went right because the disappointment could be i'm committed to holding the trade here but this sucks right you were all the way up at 45 32 and you're all the way back to 45 17 over here and you can't go here comes my stop and i left you know by the time i'm at 45 17 i'm going to go Man, I left 15 ES points on the table, right? So um, I was talking to Matt, and um, I actually got it from a book that I was reading about um, about um, Wilson, the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks and, and his training coach. And it goes back to the idea of uh, panicking. So I know myself included, a lot of traders take a, let's say you go off process, which we all do from time to time, right? And you take a loss. The very next thing you want to do from, I'd say, eight out of 10 people is make up that loss. Like, even if you don't do it, that's the first overwhelming feeling is get that loss off the books, right? 
what happens next is what? You take another shitty trade and you lose money again. Totally guilty of that. More than I would like. Right? Why? Because my overwhelming desire is to get off that loss and make up for something that I feel dumb having done. Right? So the way the way to fix that is actually have a trade plan for when you take a trade off plan, right? And that plan is very simple. You acknowledge that you took the trade off plan. As soon as you recognize it, you exit that trade. The Almost the worst thing that could happen to you at that point is that off plan trade pays you a huge amount of money. Why? Your brain's going to go, let's do that again. That was freaking cool, right? Next, you acknowledge that you're going to want to make that up. That's step two. I want to get rid of that loss. I want to get rid of that black eye, right? Step number three is go back to the middle. That's the part I got from the Russell Wilson uh, book. Go back to the middle. For us, the middle is I want to make up the loss. How do I make up the loss? I make up the loss by going back on process. It puts me back in the middle of the road, out of the ditch, right? And if I follow my process, right? So you're going to have to fight that adrenaline push or whatever it is you have inside of you to make up the loss. But if, and you have to believe that if you go back to process, you, you have to, as they say in football, you have to buy into the program, right? If you go back to the process, the next trade should start to lift you. It may not even lift you all at once. But the most important thing is that you're on process. That is your process for when you're off process. Okay. So, but if you look at this, right? So let's say you 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 goof this completely. Let's say you you didn't short here. You were holding here and you were sure you were going to get stopped. So you do what we all kind of do. They're like, oh, I'm going to move my stop up. Boink, gets pinged. And now you're really pissed, right? Like get yourself really twisted up on a move like that. Like it's happened to all of us, right? And then you go, okay, I'll catch the short. But then you don't get to short off the edge because it doesn't close back into a power bar. Maybe there's something to the left we can look at. Let's see if this closes back in. Uh, you did you close back into that power bar. So that was a valid short there. Okay. I want to show everybody that. See, I'm looking to my left to make sure I'm closing back into another power bar that got stopped out. Right there. Right there. Took the stops. Triangle down. All right. Didn't give me much extension, but it didn't stop me out either. I had to be committed to the trade. Right. Or you could have taken the no supply, no demand, triangle down for the extension on the short. Now, that trade, if you took this trade, your entry was here. All right, go through the steps. 45.47. You could have added right here at 45.49. Your stop on the whole trade was 45.53, right? And you got an extension down. The best you could have possibly done would have been 45. 29 and it took out the power bar here to the left at 245 and gave you a triangle up to give you another extension gave you the backside test so 4533 back to 4552 however here's where i'm going to use myself as an example here's where simon screws that up simon is so pissed off let's say i'm the guy that i was like totally committed to holding and i go you know what it shouldn't get behind I'm going to cheat. I'm going to save myself two points. And I'm going to put my point. I'm going to put my stop right here. It really shouldn't get back there anyways. And I get stopped. I can tell you what I'm doing because I'm pissed off. Short, stopped, short, stopped. And now I'm like, I can't take the third trade. I'm already buried. Right. And I'm like, how can it keep going up? And I've lost my cool. So it's important. It's important that you move yourself. And I worked on this in deep detail last night in my own journaling move your have a plan for when you screw it up have a plan for when you're disappointed on your stops and a step to work yourself through that right our natural instinct is the i'm going to take the next trade immediately it's usually the instinct that bites us in the butt right so i want to discuss one other thing if you're over here right if you're over here this is your way to the low right This is your wave to the high. Okay. When you get in between these two points, you are highly likely to ping pong. You are going to need a target up above or a way to resolve this. Or 
you wait. See when you took the long over here? See how there's no way to a high to block you technically, right? You could have looked at that and gone, that's my way to the high. That's my upside target. We almost hit it. Not quite, right? But over here, you're going to get ping pong in between these two bars. And it can create a lot of chop in between that zone. I don't have a fix for that other than there's some members in the room. Just choose not to trade it when there's a wave above and a wave below. Or they have to have a strong bias one way or the other. I can tell you once you get above that wave to the high and it gets an orthodox close above there, if we get a triangle back up, see how it, it just it's ping ponging between those two spots? So I can tell you once we get above here, if you can get a no supply, no demand down, and then a triangle up, that's what launches it to the upside. Same thing with that wave to the low today. So it gives you areas to look at, right? So I'm going to give you an example of that. So yesterday at the low, this is all on ES. You don't have to be trading NQ. So here's late in the day, right? See how we had that? See how this was the wave to the low? All right? Normally we go, we've gotten above the wave to the low. It's time to walk to the upside, right? You even got a no supply, no demand, triangle up. You were looking pretty keen right there to, to go higher, right? Um, you closed in over here to a power bar to the left, right? So you either could be long from here or long from here. Either way, you get your scales off, right? But see, once it closes, so what, what, are we, what are we leaning on? We're leaning on the wave to the low and pushing back up, right? So notice once you get the orthodox close underneath, this is the process. I'm going to say it so everyone should have their pens out. The process is orthodox close underneath the wave to the low. You're then looking for no supply, no demand. And as long as the bar doesn't close above that no supply, no demand, your entry is on the triangle down with the stop one bar behind or whatever the high of that little consolidation is. That is the process for that setup. And you have to be willing to short the low of the day because it almost always is the low of the day for continuation. And it doesn't always puke like it did. And the process is inverse at the high, which a lot of breakouts to the upside look like. So that's a very specific, exactly what that process looks like uh, for a trade. So it's the same thing in NQ, just multiply the speed and the steroids involved with it. But it's the same, it's the same essential trade. Does anyone have any questions? That's my plan for today. We're opening right in between. We're below value on ES. We're below value area high. And we're above support, which is 4530 all the way down to 4520. So obviously, it's hard to be committed to the short. Just remember, even when we get into bear markets, I know we closed on the low yesterday. It gets people bearish. They push down, right? And they trap themselves. And we get these huge rotations up. So you can't come in, even if you're bearish, you got to be bearish from rotations higher, not from the low. Like that particular setup at the low yesterday, and you'll notice when that whole thing set up was all in the last half hour. So I wasn't even around to take advantage of that, right? This is just, that's a rare setup. Don't let it influence your, your bearishness. Certainly don't let it influence your bearishness. They're going to, what we want is for people to press down, trap sellers, push up and then from love pushes up, look for shorts for pushes back down, right? But you'll if you go back and look, even in the bearish, most bearish of bearishness, going back to even if you can pull data all the way back to um, 2000, you'll see when you see people who go, oh yeah, like if you ever meet anyone who says, oh, I was short the whole bear market in 07 or 08 or 2000, that thing did what we did yesterday all the freaking time. Like it wasn't rare. It was frustrating, but it wasn't rare, right? So how many people do you know that are leveraged, right? How many people do you know that started the day off? Like if you look at that rotation, yeah, I'm short up here. And yeah, I totally didn't freak out when it came back more than 50% all the way back over here. I, I was committed to the short, like very few retail traders are. Like that's a huge rotation back up. Or how about if you got it wrong, right? Let's say you shorted over here. And you're like, oh, I know this market, right? So your call is, right, your 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 target. Imagine you're 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 over here, right? Your target is to take out this low at 45 night 20, right? For whatever reason, right? So you're short over here, going, oh, we're going to 45 20. I've got it nailed, right? You get all the way down here. You're telling me you're still committed all the way back up here. 
nope. I don't know a soul who can stand the pain on that. Not one person that can stand the pain. Maybe some options traders, but that's very, very difficult. And even in options trading, you're getting your ass kicked on the premium. Like you better be mega committed. It's very, very hard. So for us in our time frame, don't don't look at that chart and go, oh, we're going to 4520. So therefore I'm trading that that level. We're trading the process against levels that are there and we're looking for what's what's trapping buyers and sellers above and below and then what the proper setups are along the way so today my goal for trading is to take the more conservative entries why because i got smoked taking the most aggressive entries yesterday i had a very good day i came in and i tried to press hard and i was getting hit um basically on stuff like this where we're going straight up right and i was trying to grab these shorts and then i wasn't taking quick profits so it was just coming right up against me and my day would have looked very different if I just waited for the more conservative approach. Um, and, I, and I've had, and I've done that this morning. I can show you where my longs were on NQ and one short. I had longs and one short. And I was going off the 18. And I wasn't even pressing these. I was just trying to get money on the table, right? So let's see. I took... This was my first trade. Um, I took this and I took this. Nothing, nothing. I, I had to leave to take the girls to school. Came up here and I did want to trade, but I don't see it. I don't see what I why I did that. Oh, I did it right here. Excuse me. I do see why I did that. I did this. The push back on it right over here it was right before I opened the room and I covered it right down in here. Not massive, right? But it put some PML on. And if I would have held this original entry, um, obviously into econ at 7:30, I actually had the potential for a, I think my original entry was 32. I had a 70 point potential trade in there and I'm working on getting better at getting those bigger stretches, particularly in the morning. I leave a lot of those on the table because I'm just trying to build cushion for the day session. So um, does that make sense, guys? Does anyone have any questions about that? Does anyone have questions before we start the day? I think I suggest you skip the first half hour. We have econ at 9 o'clock. And go slow. Try to execute your best trade. All right? I know that. Everything I do will, will surround around, except for no supply, no demand, triangle down, right? Everything I do will go around, um, everything I do will go uh, around the a triangle up, triangle down. It will either be trapped to the left uh, on a power bar trap, or it'll have a no supply, no demand bar. Um, and particularly if I get a no supply, no demand. So let's pretend for a second. If I get a third wave like this, we all know what a third wave is. It's not wave counting. And I get a no supply, no demand star diamond here, right? Or I trap back in, right? So I can, it's the same thing over here. If I trap back in, stop it out, trap back in right here, I will press those trades. That's how I know when to press is I'm on a third wave. And that makes it easy for me to press. Even at 6 a.m., if you'd taken that 15,164, it was worth 50 points, essentially. $1,000 a contract, that's a good trade. So I will attempt to um, press those. That's all I've got for this morning. I think that's a good start to the day. And then I'll look for trades in the Goldilocks zone if they're on traps. So let's go have a great day. I will publish this.